Okay, here we're going to find the x values for the maximums, minimums, and zeros of the function y equals 1 half times cosine of 2x. So the period will be 2 pi divided by the absolute value of 2, which is just 2. So the period will simply be equal to pi. I divide that by 4 to get my increments. So let's see, there's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which will be pi over 2, um, 3 pi over 4, and then we'll be at 4 pi over 4, or pi. Let's see, um, the amplitude in this case is 1 half, not really too important here. Let's just plot some points. If we put in x equals 0, we'll get cosine of 0, which is 1. And then if we multiply that by 1 half, we'll be at positive 1 half. Again, not to scale, just a rough little sketch. So at 0, we're at 1 half. At pi over 4, we'll be back at, we'll be, be at 0. At pi over 2, we're at negative 1 half. 3 pi over 4, we're, we're back at 0. And at pi, we're up at, back at 1 half. Okay, so to get the maximums, the first maximum occurs at x equals 0. To get back to another maximum, we'll just have to uh, go the distance of one period, which is pi, and we multiply that by n, where n is an integer. So the maximums will occur at pi times n, where n is an integer. You could simply, obviously, certainly simplify this by just writing pi times n. The zeros, let's see, the first zero occurs at pi over 4, the first positive zero that I have here. And to get to the next zero, you only have to go half of the period. So half of the period will be pi over 2, again multiplied by n, where n is an integer. And to get the minimums, the first positive minimum, uh, the first place where we hit negative 1 half, is at pi over 2. And the same thing, just like we did for the maximums, you have to complete a full period before you get back. Same thing for the minimums, we would have to complete one full period before we're back. So that'll be pi times n, again where n is an integer.